get yourself nowhere. Ask yourself and others, why not more often? Celebrate the holy days and holidays of every culture and religion. Go barefoot more often. As a matter of fact, go naked more often. But no one to keep your pants on and when to wear more layers. Cover up. It's a cold, cold, cold mad world out there. Live with a fire in your eyes and fight for what you believe in. Challenge anyone who stands in your way. And if you must, fight back. And if you must, fight everyone. And if you must, hold picnics in the middle of rush hour traffic. Write a gracious letter to your neighborhood mail person. Give out handwritten haikus to strangers on the bus. Wear a tip jar on your shoulder as if it were casual attire. Straighten up. Good posture is the best preventative health. Do not piss off God. She is the best sniper around. Make a wave, make a splash, make a ripple, but just make something. Hell, hold a glance, hold a hand, hold a chance, but do hold on. Meditate as a lit match smolders in the palm of your hand. Invest in the future, inquire into coffins, take stock in laughter. Institute a bank and burn it down for the insurance payout. Steal everything you need and ignore everything you want. Kill as a predator and taste what it feels like to die. Keep going and forget about time. Don't just not remember time doesn't exist either. Completely forget the idea, belief, concept, paradigm, whatever symbol or sign system you currently entertain for what you measure is time starting now and smile. Wow. Laugh. Grab the nearest person and embrace them even if it's only gracious eye contact. And dream again and again, again and again, and stop thinking so much. Be spontaneous. Start making a killing. Stop procrastinating. Make a living. It's time we spin the world around again, so deviate from evolution and incite your revolution. Yeah. For the beauty. I'm looking for the inner world. The beauty fades away with years. The soul doesn't, so I'm told. Our recovery will be fortress. We'll live much better than before. We'll have some fun and so much less stress. All that the human's looking for. We'll go through hurricanes and thunder. We'll stick together side by side. We'll even travel down under. All our troubles set aside. So please fill out the application and drop it in the box below. I'll find the one in the palm nation. Between us, happiness will grow. Ladies, feel free, I'm still accepting. Courage. I seek to find all that confidence, all that rage. I wish, oh how I wish, I had that kind, one drop of warrior's blood, one tenth of one pint. Not long ago, I was a cub, playful, free, careless, naive, can't help but sob. Where did my freedom go? I was not safe, I was not sound, laughing hyenas scorching sands, trust that animal instinct. Pause, firm on the ground. My father was king. All bowed to him. Amazing lion, thunderous roar. Shoot the jungle, impossible to ignore. Like father, no other. Inspiring fear and respect. I loved him despite the tears. Ah, his split image, mother would. When I was just a little girl, I was known as a fake Mexican. All because I didn't know the language of my people. So I began to wonder, what would make me a Mexican, a real Mexican? Should I wear a rosa in my hair and talk like this? <laughs> to be a Mexican, a real Mexican, I'll watch novelas at my abuelas and act like this. No, no, no! Ay, Dios mío! 
I'll make frijoles and guacamole. I'll learn to dance around that big, gigantic hat. Or should I be a chola and drink Coca-Cola with shaved eyebrows, black charpy lips, and a teardrop tat? Pues orale vatos! Frida Kahlo, Cesar Chavez, Carlos Santana, por favor, I need your guidance fast. Because you're real Mexicans, Mexicanos, and only you can tell me if I could really pass. So then Frida, Cesar, and Carlos, they came to me and they said, Elisa, you need to go to UCLA. And I was like, of course, the University of Chicanos in Los Angeles. So there I became a Spanish major and I finally learned the language of my people. And now I'm a Mexican, a real Mexican. Chimichanga, arroz con leche, quesadilla. I'm a real Mexican. And I'm finally real at last. Thank you. <laughs> finish line exists or not so it's fun I find that when I talk to people about religion though I find myself talking to somebody that I have made very upset for whatever reason like there, there was one time in particular it was a Wednesday in high school and I remember that it was a Wednesday because this wasn't just any old Wednesday this was an Ash Wednesday oh. and much to my surprise a kid came to school with ash on his forehead and you'd think that wouldn't be a surprise since that's the name of the game on that day of the year. But I was raised Jewish, so I had no idea what any of that meant. Like, I didn't know that there could be any other type of a Wednesday than Wednesday. I didn't know you could remix them. And this, I, so I started asking people, like, what is on his forehead? And this was one of those religious kids, but not like peace and tan khakis religious. Like, P.O.D. religious. This kid was aggressively going through puberty in the name of the Lord. And he, I guess he heard that I was asking people about his ash, and he got so upset with me that he started telling people, and I quote, I want to rip his effing throat out. And he said effing because he's a good Christian. But you know, if you show up to high school looking anything outside of the norm, know to expect a few questions throughout the day. Like, you can't get a tattoo on your forehead that says, ask me about my tattoo, and then get mad at me when I ask you about your tattoo. 
God forbid I had ever shown up to school wearing a yarmulke, because they would have had to start a school paper just so that could be put on the front page. People would be so curious about it. And I just wanted to know what was on his forehead. But the, uh, from then on, this guy, knowing that I was Jewish, he would threaten me with Bible verses. Like, I would walk by him and he would whisper to me, do unto others, meaning that he wanted to kill me, a Jew, because one of us Jews got Jesus, a Jew, killed. But blaming Jewish people for Jesus' death is like a car crash happening in Asia and going, ugh, Asian drivers, they're at it again. There was nothing but Jewish people around. Someone had to do it. And also, it was a crucifixion. It wasn't crucifact, so relax. For his sake, I hope that Ash Wednesday is followed by exfoliating facial Thursday, because Jesus died for your sins, not for your complexion. It took me 10 years to come to terms with what this guy was saying to me, but what, this guy works for TMZ now, so he's not getting into his precious heaven anyway. You can rub as much ash on your body as you want, Brian. You make a living doing the <laughs> devil's work. The ticket's void. Speaking of...